Think about a typical week during term time. Once you take away the time spent in classes, and you take away the time spent dealing with defined homework, then the time you have left is your free time. It is you who chooses how to use this time. It is you who chooses how much of this time to devote to voluntary study. It is how you choose to use this free time, and how effectively you use it, that will ultimately determine your level of success. Welcome to day four. Over the next two days, I'm going to describe to you six voluntary study activities, which, if you do regularly, will dramatically improve your understanding and will help you to be well prepared for your exams. Today we will discuss three voluntary study activities which I suggest that you complete on weekdays during term time. On weekdays during term time, find time to 1. Revisit the day's lectures, 2. Read recommended texts, and 3. Prepare for your organised classes. I'll describe each of these activities in turn. Revisit each of your lectures after class preferably on the same day. Imagine these are the notes that you've made in one of your lectures. I'll use these notes to illustrate to you what I mean by the revisiting technique. Spend about 30 minutes revisiting each of your lectures. Firstly, make sure that your notes are clear and correct and draw attention to the most important points by highlighting, boxing or underlining them. Secondly, an excellent aid to your learning is to try re-representing the information in your lecture in a more creative way. In each revisiting session, for example, try representing your lecture as a single spider diagram. This is an example of a spider diagram that you could create to represent day three of this course. Instead of a spider diagram, you could create a table, a flowchart, an annotated diagram, or a list, and so on. Representing your notes in this way causes you to recognise the patterns, connections, and associations within your work, which in turn helps you to learn and remember. This is active study. You are thinking, selecting, recognising patterns, drawing, and writing. Remember, examination questions usually require that you demonstrate your understanding by showing that you have recognised patterns and connections within your work. Rarely do examination questions simply require you to regurgitate chunks of information exactly in the same order that it was given to you in your lecture. At the end of your revisiting session, put your notes to one side and try to recall the main points from memory. Any notes that you make in your revisiting session should be stored with your lecture notes on the same topic so that all your notes are in one place. As well as your revisiting sessions, set aside a few weekday study sessions to look up the references mentioned in your classes. Once you have selected a book, read actively, not passively. For example, when you're trying to learn from a passage in a textbook, don't simply read and reread the passage over and over again in the hope that the information will stick. After the second reading or so, you will struggle to maintain focus and your mind may wander off onto other things. Simply reading and rereading a passage is a relatively ineffective, inactive way of learning. Make your reading active. When you've chosen a book to read, as with any study session, specifically define your objective. For example, you may be looking for a specific fact or piece of information, or you may be trying to get a better understanding of an aspect of your work. Once again, any notes that you make in this session should then be filed with your lecture notes on the same topic. The third and final task that I will suggest to you today is to prepare for your organised classes. Allocate a few study sessions each week during term time to preparing for your lectures, your practical classes, your seminars and your tutorials. You will probably have a syllabus for each of your lecture courses, a practical booklet detailing the experiments that you will be conducting in your practical sessions, and booklets detailing the topics to be discussed in your lectures and your tutorials. Use these resources to help in these study sessions. This preparation shouldn't take you long, but it will help you to keep a keen and active mind in your organised classes. So, to summarise this lesson, on weekdays during term time, find time to revisit your lecture notes, read recommended texts, and prepare for your organised classes. 
On day five of this course, I will describe to you three study activities to complete each weekend during term time.